And now, WBW Theatre. Welcome to WBW Theatre. Listen to a series of radio dramas, comedies, mysteries, thrillers, westerns, all dedicated to preserving the golden age of radio. Those thrilling days of yesteryear, way back when families gathered together around the living room radio to join the theater of the mind. Listen now, as we take you way back when imagination ruled and creativity had no limits. Listen now to... WBW Theater. There's the fur coat I was telling you about, Harry. The one in the window, right there. The which one, Janet? That one. The second one to the left. That's a mink, isn't it? (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. Can you get that one for me? Sure, I can. Easy. But it costs $10,000, if that's the one they showed in the ad. Well, is it the one they showed in the ad? Yes, I'm sure it is. Okay, baby, then I'll get it for you. But how, Harry? How? I'll show you how. When? Now? No, no. It may take a couple days. A couple of days? Yeah, it never took me longer than that to get a fuck hope before. But that was in the other cities, darling. Maybe things are different here. Maybe, but I'm the same and my plan's the same. Yes, darling, I know. Okay, as long as you know. All we need to get that code is $2,000, a rainy day, and Boston Blackie. And now on to Richard Coleman as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friend. Okay, Janet, let's get moving. You got the coat. Harry, the mink? What'd you think I was doing while you were paying two G's for that pears and lamb? Well, where is it? Harry, where's the mink? Right here on my arm under the raincoat. Oh. Hey, I'm getting soaked. Yeah? Taxi! Hey, taxi! Taxi! (coughs) Oh, that's good. Come on, Janet. Well, we're in luck all day today. We got a cab on the first try. Come on, get in. Oh, it's good to get out of the rain. Yeah, you ain't kidding. Weston Hotel, driver. Okay. Well, we'll go to my place for a while till we dry out, Janet. Anything you say, darling. Ah, Harry, you're so wonderful. You like me, huh? (laughs) Love you. Maybe, huh? Uh, Maybe you just love the things you're getting because I'm smart. Ha! You know better than that, honey. Doesn't it feel snug with me next to you? Yeah, it feels great, but don't think I'm forgetting that you're snuggling up to that mink coat I've got on my arm. Oh, honey. Uh, Now, kid, you've got work to do. What kind of work? You're going back to Boston Blackie. There's something else you got to get him to do for us. Can you do it? Can I? Blackie will do anything I say. Hello, Blackie. Oh, hello, Janet. Come in. (laughs) Thanks. Did you get the coat? Yes, I did. You obviously didn't have any trouble. Oh, none at all, thanks to you. Don't thank me for anything yet. Glad to do it for you. (laughs) Well, I wanted to thank you just the same, Blackie. After all, I couldn't have gotten this without your help. Well, you can have my help any time you want it, Janet. Say, that's a pretty coat you're wearing. Is that the one? <laughs> it's one of them. The other's mink, and it's beautiful. And Blackie, you're wonderful. I can't thank you enough. Don't look now, but you just thank me very nicely. I think you're sweet. Wonderful and sweet. Say... I'm quite the guy. I should say you are, Blackie. I'd like to bring the mink to you. Would you keep it for me, please? Well, sure. But why? Well, I think it's safer with you. I don't like to keep it in my hotel room. Well, I'll keep it in a safe place for you. Until you leave town, if you like. Oh, that won't be for several days yet. Maybe a week or two. And I'll want to get a few more things while I'm here. You'll help me with them, too? 
You can count on me. I'll do my part. As well as you did this time? Don't worry. You just name the store, I'll do the rest. Oh, Blackie, that's all I want to know. Open up, Miss Wesley. Open up! Who is it? Faraday. Inspector Faraday. Open the door, Miss Wesley. Just a second. Come on, come on. Well, you can at least wait until I get the door open. What's all the excitement about? I'm looking for something and someone. Well, if it's Blackie, he isn't here. No, I'm not looking for Blackie yet. What I'm looking for right now is proof of something maybe you and Blackie did together. Well, let's see. We went to the movies together last night. Would you like to see the ticket stubs? No, I'd like to see some stolen furs. Stolen furs? Yes, stolen by a man and a woman. The description of the woman almost fits you. And I have a hunch that the man is Harry Barlow, wanted for murder in Kansas. Well, that's fine, Inspector Faraday. But what does that have to do with Blackie? Plenty. Blackie phoned the stores and recommended some customers. Then, shortly after they showed up, expensive fur coats went missing. And you think that I was the woman? Yeah. Well, I wasn't. Well, maybe you were, and maybe you weren't. But I'm going to search this apartment just the same. Oh, no, you're not, Inspector. Oh, oh yes, I am, Miss. Not Wayne. without a search warrant. Oh, you know the law, do you? I certainly do. And you can't search my apartment without a search warrant. That's right, Miss Wesley. I can't. But it just so happens that right here in my pocket, I have a warrant to search this apartment. You what? Sorry, Miss Wesley. I hope I don't find anything here. But you take a look at this warrant while I take a look at your closets. Oh, my gosh. This is a warrant to search my apartment. You're not joking. I'll say I'm not. And I'm looking for a mink coat, a ermine cape, a chinchilla coat, and a sable wrap. What? You heard me. Well, you're certainly not going to find them in there. Unless that six-year-old camel hair looks like a brand new mink to you. No, even I know mink from camel's hair. Nothing I'm looking for in there. What's in this closet? Oh, be careful. That has my cleaning stuff in it. Yeah? Hmm. Floor mop, vacuum cleaner, dust mop, and broom. I'm a clean one, huh? Sure, so why don't you come clean with me? You have the other closets in here, don't you? Yes, yes, there's that one right over there. I suppose you're going to look in that one, too? The warrant says I can search your entire apartment, Miss Wesley. Well, go right ahead, Inspector, if you can stand the disappointment. Now look, I don't say that you and Blackie stole anything. I just say I think that you and Blackie had something to do with these missing furs. The only furs I have are missing, Inspector. Missing from my wardrobe. Budget, you know. Yeah, let's see what's in this closet. Looks like it's got nothing in it but dresses. Well, it's strange that it should look that way because all it has is dresses. Wait a minute. Till I look behind them. Aha! What'd you find behind them, Inspector? Nothing. Just a wall. Only what's this? Over on the side of the closet? It's just a box. Yeah, it looks as if it might have a coat in it. A fur coat. It's heavy. Inspector Faraday, don't open that box. No, my warrant says I can search this apartment and everything in it. Yes, but don't open that box. Please, you can't. Blackie said that it wasn't to be opened by anybody. Blackie sent this box to you? Yes, and he warned me not to open it. Please, Inspector, please. Blackie must have a good reason. And I think I know what that reason is. Oh? I'm opening this box. Inspector, I don't know why you think... You... This string is the strongest wire. Ah, 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 got it. And I'm going to get it, too. Blackie will never believe that I didn't open it. Ah, uh, if it has what I'm looking for in it, I'll tell Blackie who opened it. Oh, golly. Well, it's open and... Ms. Wesley. Yes? Want to come and have a peek? Why, what's in the box? You know what's in it, and now I do too. A fur coat? 
A mink? A stolen mink. Oh, no. Yes. Well, Blackie didn't steal it. So you say Blackie sent it to you. Blackie asked you to hide it. But Blackie had nothing to do with this, huh? Well, I don't know why he sent me this coat or why he asked me not to open the box. But I'm going to find out why. I'm going to see Blackie. You're going to see him, Miss Wesley? Yes, I am. And I'm going to get a few things good and straight. Well, I'm going to see him, too. Because at last, I got proof that boyfriend of yours is crooked. Hello, Blackie. Oh, Janet, come on in. You're alone? Uh-huh. How'd everything go at the store this afternoon? Oh, not a single hitch. Look at the coat I got at Baxter's. Like it? Expensive. I got two. This one was the cheaper one. Everything worked out all right then? Hmm? Perfectly. Glad to hear it. Tell me something, Janet. Did you, uh... Oh. We're not alone anymore. Oh, dear. Come in. Hello, Blackie. Goodbye, Faraday. Don't you say hello or goodbye to me, Boston Blackie. Well, uh, Mary, I didn't expect you. Mary, this is... Never mind who that is, Blackie. I know, she's the girl you sent to those stores to steal fur coats for you. What? And the nerve of you hiding them in my apartment. You opened the box, Mary. No, she didn't. I did. And I know this girl is working with you. She's wearing the fur coat she got at Baxter's this afternoon. Blackie, you'd better do something about this. I'll say he better, miss. Whatever your name is. He had some explaining to do. He can explain everything to me down at headquarters. Come on, lady. You're going with him. Blackie? No, she isn't Faraday. You're not taking us anywhere. No. You deny you sent that coat to Miss Wesley's? No. I admit it. And I admit I told her not to open that box, oh, too. Oh, why, Blackie? Why did you do that? Let's not worry about why, Miss Wesley. He admits everything. And I think you'll admit that this is a gun in my hand, too, Faraday. Blackie, put that gun away. Not until I put you away, Faraday. In this closet. <clears throat> Blackie, please, don't! Quiet, Mary. What are you doing? I know what I'm doing. Get in that closet, Faraday. All right, Blackie, but so help me. I'll take care of you. Oh, Blackie, you shouldn't have done that. It's all right, Janet. Don't let Faraday bother you. Blackie, what is this all about? You have nothing to worry about, Mary. Oh, I haven't, and I suppose this is all very funny. No, it's not funny at all. I have Faraday locked in that closet. Now you get in this one. What? Sorry, Mary. Sorry, but you're going to be left in the dark. Blackie! Blackie, what are you doing? Locking you in a closet, too. Can't you tell? Blackie, what do we do now? Blackie! Janet! Blackie, please, let me out! Janet, those two are behind locked doors now, but we're not. We're getting out of here. Janet Corning and a man named Harry Barlow, wanted for a Kansas murder, are stealing furs and apparently getting assistance in their work from Boston Blackie. Inspector Faraday is convinced that Blackie is working with the thieves when he finds a stolen fur coat hidden away in Mary Wesley's apartment. When confronted with this evidence, Blackie locks both Faraday and Mary in a closet and escapes with Janet. As we return to our story, Blackie and Janet are in Blackie's car, driving down the street in a remote part of town. All right, Janet. Tell me what this is all about. Oh, Blackie, I'm awfully glad you asked that. I've been almost crazy trying to tell someone, but I've been afraid. You're not afraid to tell me. No, because you can help me. Somebody better help me. On account of trying to help you, I'm really messed up. Well, you'll get out of it, Blackie. You always do. But what about me? What about you? Well, you know who I am, don't you? Of course I know who you are. Niece of my best friend, Charlie Kingston. That's why I went to the trouble of locking Inspector Faraday in the closet. 
And that girl, why did you lock her in the closet too? So Faraday would know she wasn't in on this. Now come on, tell me what kind of jam you're in. Blackie, I'm working with a man named Harry Barlow. Not because I want to, but because he tricked me into it. And Barlow is making you do what? Steal furs with him. How? Oh, it's all very simple. I go in and ask to look at furs while I buy a cheap one. Harry steals an expensive one I've looked at but didn't buy. Blackie, he made me get you to recommend them so the stores wouldn't hesitate to show us their best stuff. Oh, so that's the racket. Okay. Can I get in touch with this fellow? Huh, I'll give you his address. In fact, if you want to go and see him and walk in on him by surprise, I have the key to his room right here in my bag. No. Never mind about that. Just give me his address. Where does he live? At 507 Lane Street. 507 Lane Street. <laughs> I think I'll go up and have a little talk with that guy. But Blackie, please be careful. He's dangerous. So am I. Sometimes. And this is one of those times. But he is. He really is. You're taking an awful risk, and, and you shouldn't do it. Not for me. I'm not doing it for you alone, beautiful. I'm doing it for myself, too. Furs are supposed to keep people warm. I can believe that. The one you and Harry Stoll certainly have made it hot for me. Well, what is this, Janet? Oh, hello, Harry. Just like that? Hello, Harry. Sorry I interrupted your packing. Going somewhere? Oh, no. Not exactly. I figure we might have to leave town almost any time now, and I wanted to be ready. Oh, you did, did you? Uh-huh. You weren't going to run out on me or anything like that. Honey, you know better than that. I did once. But that was before you met Blackie. Blackie? Now look, Harry. There's nothing between him and me. I just sent him all the way to the other end of town on a phony address. He wanted to find you, honey. Find me for what reason, kid? To knock me off so you and him could be a team? Harry, you, ca you can't... No more lies, Janet. Here you are, ready to pull out and leave me to take the rap for all those fur jobs. You figured we were through, didn't you? Oh, no, no, Harry. Honest, I didn't. I've got news for you. You and I are through, but I decided that just now. I'm packing you in. You're hot as a two-bit pistol. You could be picked up by any of those sales girls that waited on you. I was going to string along with you in spite of that, but I changed my mind now. I'm leaving town, but you're staying here. Okay, bud. That's all right with me. Is it? Yeah. It better be. You know, kid, you're just a natural-born double-crosser. You say you sent Blackie on a wild goose chase. Okay. You crossed him. You were going to pull out of here, pick up your loot, and scram. That means you were going to cross me. You can't be trusted, Janet. Mm -mm. You just can't be trusted. Look, Harry. You're going haywire. You're blowing your lid. No. Uh -huh. I'm thinking good, baby. Very good. I'm getting out of town and I'm leaving you here. I can't let you spill all about me to Blackie or the cops. No, I won't talk, Harry. Honest, I won't. I'll say you won't. This Persian lamb coat here. Yeah. Lovely, isn't it? Yeah. Well, come here, baby. Come here. Harry. You know something? Hmm? You're lovely, too, Janet. It's too bad you couldn't play anything straight. Harry, you're not... Now what? Harry, you're not... Relax, relax. That's better. You know, I just thought of something. Huh? You used to say when we started out in this racket that you wanted all the good things that you could grab. Yeah? Yeah. You wanted to be loaded with diamonds and smothered in mink. Yeah, but but I... Harry, you... put, put the coat down. Yeah, put, you wanted to be down. smothered in mink, huh? Well, you're going to have to make a slight sacrifice, darling. You're smothered in no. Persian lamb. Uh, no! Hey, Faraday. You still in the closet? Where, where do you think I am, in Florida? Well, I'm going to let you out. 
It's about time. Where have you been? At a phony address. Oh, your address is going to be the city jail in a minute. Hold it, Faraday. I know when I've made a mistake, and I admit it, too. You sure made a mistake locking me in that closet. That's the least of my mistakes, pal. Wait till I get Mary out of her closet. Mary? You all right? Oh, it's just fine. I love it in here. It's so airy, and the view's divine. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, Mary, but I had to lock you in. Golly! I wanted Faraday to know that you and I weren't working together on this. Forgive me, will you? I don't know. First, I'll have to see what life is like on the outside. My goodness, it's still daylight, isn't it? <laughs> Maybe it's daylight, Miss Wesley. But your friend Blackie is going to be in a nice, dark cell. Look, Faraday! Look, I told you, I made a mistake. I thought that girl was the niece of my friend, Charlie Kingston, and in a jam. So I was just trying to help her. What do you mean you thought she was Charlie Kingston's niece? Didn't it occur to you to check? I tried to, Faraday, but Charlie's traveling in Europe and I couldn't get a hold of him. She had a letter. Now I know it was a forgery. Fine time to find out. All right. But that doesn't explain everything. I know. You want to know what I've been doing to help these two. Well, it's nothing, really. All I did was phone the stores and ask that my friends be well taken care of. Apparently, they wanted me to do that for two reasons. One, to be sure they only saw the best furs. And second, so that when they left town... The heat would be on me. Well, that coat in my apartment certainly puts the heat on me. I'm sore about that, Blackie. Oh, I can explain that too, Mary. Janet asked me to keep it for her. I didn't want to leave it here. Any character in town is liable to drop in here any time, so I thought the safer place would be in your apartment. Oh, fine, fine. You keep your fur coat for another girl in my apartment. But, Mary... Don't you see why? Oh, yes, sure. I see it now. Well, I don't see why you warned Miss Wesley not to open the box. That should be obvious to a school kid, Faraday. If Mary had opened the box, she'd have thought the coat was for her. And I didn't think it was the right thing to ask her to keep a coat for somebody else. Oh, yeah. I don't get it. I think he's telling the truth, Inspector. I would have thought that coat was for me. I have a birthday coming up soon. Okay, it's beginning to make sense to me now. But when you ran out on us, what were you going to help Janet do? Steal more furs? No! I didn't realize she was stealing furs. I thought she was just being used by someone who was. Now I've changed my mind. Since she sent me on a wild goose chase, Faraday, I admit... I made a mistake. <laughs> so the great Boston Blackie admits he made a mistake, does he? Mm. That's a good one. <laughs> I know a hyena that laughs better and looks better while he's doing it. Lay off me, will you? I admit I've made a mess out of this. But give me time and I'll straighten it out. I'll give you time, all right. Five or ten years for obstructing justice. I could have nabbed that girl except for you. I'm sorry, Faraday. I thought she was an all right girl in a jam. Oh, Blackie, you always were a pushover for a pretty face, weren't you? I still am. Aren't you glad of that, Mary? Oh, I never thought of that. Hey, Faraday, who are you calling? Headquarters. Thanks to you and your stupidity, I'm going to have to send out an alarm for that girl. Look, I'll find her. I'll find her. Sure you will. In your offices, after I bring her in. If she isn't brought in my office pretty soon, you're going to have to be there yourself, under arrest. Homicide. Hello, this is Faraday. Oh, I'm glad you called, Inspector. We've been looking everywhere for you. Never mind about me. I want you to look everywhere for a girl named Janet. Corning. Janet Corning, five feet five inches, brown hair. Brown eyes. And breath. Cutest little dimples you've ever seen. Brown eyes and the cutest little... Uh, I mean, she has her prominent dimples. Get it? Yeah, 
I not only got the description, Inspector, but I've got the girl. What? Yes, sir. Well, hold her. I want to question her. Sorry, Inspector. I'm afraid you can't do that. She's on a slab in a morgue. Dead. Dead? Yep. Smothered to death, we think. Okay, thanks. I'll be right down there. Blackie, your girlfriend Janet is dead. Dead? Oh, how awful. It could be worse, though, Mary. You see, I know who killed her. Sure, the guy at the phony address. How you gonna find him? I'm not gonna find him, Faraday. He's going to find me. There's something else he wants, only I've got it. And I'm going to keep it. Who's that? You want to know, Blackie? Who are you? What are you doing in my apartment? Maybe you'd like one answer at a time, huh? Uh, This time in the morning? One at a time is all I can understand. Who are you? Harry Barlow. Mean anything to you? Yes. You're uh, Janet Corning's partner. Or should I say, the late Janet Corning's partner. You know she's dead, huh? Blackie, you awake enough to see this gun in my hand? I saw that before I saw you. I don't know which of you I'm sorrier to see. Give me that key and you won't see either of us in a minute. What key? You know. The key that Janet gave you. The key to the safe deposit box where I got the furs in. Oh, that key. I've got it. But Janet didn't give it to me. I lifted it out of her purse. What? What's the difference how you got it? I want it. I'm leaving town and I'm not leaving without those furs. All right. With that gun in your hand, I guess there's nothing I can do but let you have the key. It's right there. Oh, no, you won't. In the top of the drawer. No, no, you won't, Blackie. I'll get it myself. What's the matter? Don't you trust me? (laughs) Sure, sure, I trust you, Blackie, as long as you keep your hands right where they are. Yeah, that's the key, all right. Well, if you want to take it, I can argue with you, but not with that gun there. I'm going to take it, all right, as a little present for Papa. Hot dog! (laughs) I've got something for Papa, too, Harry. It's the poke in the jaw I gave you that knocked you out, Barlow. But wouldn't you like to know what hit you when you grabbed that key? Busy, Blackie? No. Come on in, Faraday. Sit down. I was just sitting here with nothing on my mind. You won't change that situation any. You've got nothing on your mind, but I've got plenty on mine, Blackie. We have Harry Barlow Cole for those fur heisting jobs, and he's wanted for murder in the Midwest. How did you grab him? It's a secret, Faraday. But I'll give you a little tiny hint. He went for a key that I planted in my room. And did he get it? He sure did. Right across his great big chin. I clipped him, Faraday. What was he doing all this time? I'll give it to you slowly, pal. He came into my room with a gun. Yeah? He knew I had the key to the box where the where the stolen furs were locked up. Yeah? I told him to take the key, but I forgot to tell him that I had wired it to an electric socket. I get it. He grabbed the key, got a shock, and dropped his gun. You're close, kid. He yelled at the shock, and I poked him one for for luck! That acted like some kind of lullaby because the next thing I knew, he was fast asleep. So that's how you did it, huh, Blackie? I was wondering. He was a pretty tough customer, they tell me. So I hear. So I hear. But he fell asleep just like a baby. Then I called you, Faraday. And when he got out of the arms of Morpheus, he was snug in the arms of the law. Join us again as we bring you exciting thrills and adventure, rip-roaring comedy, and shoot 'em up westerns and gangbusters. Next time, when your imaginations will be invited into the theater of the mind that is WBW Theater.